Everyone gets sad. It's a normal emotion we all experience. Sadness is a part of depression, and because of this, the two sometimes get confused. But you can feel sad without being depressed. Sadness is a temporary emotion, usually in response to something, whereas depression is a long-lasting condition, impacting on all aspects of life and isn't necessarily a reaction to something. The symptoms of depression can vary from person to person and can impact on all areas of a person's life, from their home and family life to their school and working life. In general, if you're feeling hopeless, low in mood all or most of the time and have no interest or enjoyment in the things you used to love doing, then it's likely that you're experiencing depression. Depression is pretty common. About 3 million people in the UK are diagnosed with depression. However, not everyone gets depressed but we all get sad from time to time. But why do we get sad and what's going on in our brains when we're feeling sad? One study compared the results from 22 different studies that looked at brain scans of people who were sad but not depressed. Sadness seemed to cause changes in activity levels in over 70 different areas of the brain. These included areas responsible for how we process and manage conflicts, how we measure how much pain we feel, how we process emotional memories, and our reward system, just to name a few. These could all add to feelings of sadness. Some of these areas overlap with areas of the brain thought to be involved in depression. This means that sadness and depression might share similar processes in our brain. However, whilst there's a lot of research on depression in the brain, there is less on sadness in the brain. The 22 different studies differed quite a lot. They used different numbers of participants, different methods, and different ways of understanding the information. So it seems more research is needed to understand the role of different areas of the brain in sadness. What we can be sure of is that there is no one area of the brain responsible for sadness. It's thought that neurotransmitters or chemicals in our brain have a role in sadness. For example, oxytocin is our social bonding hormone and we release it when we cry. Humans are social creatures and we have evolved to form social relationships and empathise with other people. Both crying and sadness help us to do this and some researchers believe that this is why we've evolved to feel sad. Crying is a physical sign of sadness. People sometimes view it as showing weakness and evolutionary speaking this is true as the blurred vision would show competitors that we're not a threat. However, it's this vulnerability that would result in protection. And while some people say crying is a sign of weakness, other people describe how they feel better after a good cry. This could be because of the makeup of our tears. Research shows that we have different types of tears. There are the ones that keep our eyes from getting dry, the ones that protect us from irritants like dust, and then there's our emotional tears. Whilst the first two are mostly water, our emotional tears are filled with proteins, including leucine and cephalins, which act like a pain reliever to boost mood. So remember, sadness is an emotion we all experience. It's different to depression, though some of the same brain areas might be involved. Sadness helps with social bonding and empathising with people, especially when there's a physical sign of sadness like crying. So let yourself feel sad, as in the long term, this might help you to feel better.